I think I did definitely saw it coming at the point where when we ended things mm-hmm. because yeah you know we'd been going through things for the past six seven years however long we'd been together so I definitely saw it coming and in fact the time that it happened I had been through heartbreak before in this relationship you know and the time that it happened I think my body was just so ready that I didn't actually go through heartbreak I didn't go through that in, in circumstances where maybe you've had all the reasons to say negative things about your partner yeah. and shape them in whichever way yeah. uh, what has kept you grounded because I know it'll hurt my kids yeah There's so many times I'm like, ah, if I could just put it on my story, I'd just <laughs> out you, you know, like just just talk about it. I mean, I could, I really could, and I would love to, but I don't want to hurt my kids. If you want kids in life, there are so many things you should do before you get into a serious relationship. I mean, these are discussions you should have early on because yeah. it's very hard for you to have these difficult conversations when you're already like in love, you're living together, and then you're now starting to have these conversations, you realize, wait. You you want to do what like you want to discipline my kids yes. how or you want to you know whatever the conversations might be I mm. think these are so important to have early on especially if you know you're going to have kids. Mm. Do you regret putting your family and your love life out there and would you do it differently? No regrets. Mm. No regrets. You know I mean obviously there are days where you think about it and you're like oh the whole world knows you know. <laughs> A very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Gugiwa. Let me tell you guys, I've waited for this guest for a while now. We were supposed to have this conversation almost a month ago and then something came up. But then I said, you know, things of God are things of God. So I'll just wait until that opportunity comes. And now I get to be here with her. And if there's anything she's teaching me, because I was telling her even before we started, I try to interview people based on how they've made me feel. This woman is teaching us how to show up for ourselves. She's very intentional about us loving ourselves, being self-aware, and it doesn't matter the circle that you have. You have to be able to put yourself first so that you can show up authentically to the people that you love, and I'm loving her for it. Guys, she's no stranger. Majority of you know know her so I'm going to let her introduce herself so that she can walk us through how she is rebuilding in her life but before that you know I gotta pay a couple of bills here I want to say thank you to our partners at Kings Developers Limited for always coming through if you don't know the properties we are talking about on the series it's vintage and I say it's a classic evolution you know the apartments they tell you the view is nice but then later on they put up a big building in front of it and then you're like where is the view that won't happen when you get yourself an apartment at Vintage facing the park so you will have a beautiful experience. Now, if they do anything, you know where to find me, guys. Info at LNN.digital. I try to be very authentic with the partners I bring you here on the show and due diligence has been done. So if you're looking for an apartment, go to Kings Developers Limited and try to check them out. And of course, my amazing team for putting this work together, Edgar, Scholar, and Muga for all is coming through and of course Sam and Kelvin for compiling this episode and making sure guys it reaches you right on time. Miss Posema even Tasema Lin is back. So thank you so much for 700k subscribers. Let's keep moving guys. Nashukuru. And now without further ado please allow me to let this lovely lady introduce herself. Hello. Hi. Hi Tatiana. <laughs> Hello. That was a mouthful I yeah, know. <laughs> but it was so nice. It's like when you're talking about like, this is lovely. Is that, is that me really? Thank you. <laughs> no, that, that is you. Thank you. I'm what? so glad that's what you that that's what comes out. So. Well, why would you question? No, I mean I try and do that and you know people receive things in in the state that they're in. You know, yes. everything's a reflection of yourself yeah. so i mean it's just really nice to hear that that's what you're getting that's the those are the vibes no that's the vibe i'm getting lots of if people i know people who are watching from the time i honestly learned about you you've just yeah. existed in your most authentic self so maybe mm. i'm wrong but i would hate to think i'm wrong i am not wrong yeah. <laughs> introduce yourself hi everyone my name is tatiana karanja yeah. i am a photographer by profession turned content creator and yes. um, mother of three gorgeous little girls which is now my biggest role in life yeah. of course but if, like you said you know there's so much more to that there's so much more to me yeah. as much as i've been a mother and playing the motherhood role for the past six years of my life yes. yeah i am so much more than that i'm a foodie i'm a travel enthusiast yeah. i'm an adventurer um 
yeah, I love to learn about different cultures, different mm. foods. I'm just like uh, an Epicurean. That's what I am. Okay. Yeah. And you know, first things first, thank you even for making time to of be course. here. I wouldn't imagine, like, I know you have a lot in your hands. You know, we were talking and you're like, Lynn, I've been trying to figure things out, homeschooling, yeah. this and this and this. and this. How, yeah. are, how, how are your babies? They are great. I mean... Yeah, they're fantastic. I mean, I, 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 think, I like to think they're living their best lives, you know, and that's, that's all I could ever want. Yes. Yeah. Are you living your best life? I am trying. I, I think, you know, there are days where I wake up and I'm like, oh, this is exactly what I wanted. And I yeah. think you always have to go back to that, what you had wanted for yourself a few years back to mm-hmm. realize, you know what? Yes, I am actually living that. Yes. But there's this society where we're always on a rat race. We're always wanting more. Um, and I do get myself in that mindset some, once in a while. Mm-hmm. And that's when I start thinking, oh God, life is so bad. It's, been, yes. it's such a bad life. Yet I've just had a bad day. Just, you I've know, just woken up on the wrong... I've just but, had yeah. a bad day. I've just had a bad day. Life yeah. isn't bad. Life yeah. is great, actually. Um, so it depends what, when you catch me. It depends when you catch me how I'll answer that question. But right now, life is great. Life is great. Yeah. You know, and the series that we are filming right now, it's dubbed Rebuilding. Mm-hmm. But then I was also with Murugi the other day and she was like, Lynn, I'm building, you know. So in your life, are you rebuilding or are you building? And what exactly are you rebuilding or building right now? I think I'm doing both Ooh. at the same time. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, yeah, I did. I have had to rebuild quite a bit. Um, rebuild, like, you know, what I think a family should be mm-hmm. like. Rebuild what I think mothering should be like. Um, rebuild my ideals around, yeah, motherhood, parenting, yeah. what a family is like, all of that. Um, rebuild a life with my kids, you know, without their dad. So there are, there's a sense of rebuilding. But yes. like she said, I'm also building. You know, yeah. I'm building my career. Um, I'm building the life that I want for myself and my kids. Um, so, yeah, I think both at the same time. Yes. And if there's anything I always, I was listening to you at a particular, I don't know if it's an interview or podcast or something, and you said you are trying so much. Um, I can't paraphrase, let me just paraphrase, but you are showing up right now for yourself more. Yeah. Is it that you always showed up for other people yeah. before you showed up for yourself? And why is that part important for you to be able now to, you know, just create room for yourself and time for yeah. yourself? You know, I think we also go through seasons. So I think it's okay to have people, put people in front of you and realize that that's just a season of your life, especially being a parent. You know, it's very hard to differentiate when you put yourself first or when your kids should be put first. At the end of the day, you know, a lot of people like to say that you should always come first, but I'm, you know, I wanted my kids and I brought them into this world and I feel like there should be some sort of compromise in your life as well right so of course i i don't feel like kids should just exist in my life i brought them into this world and they have their own life to live and i want to give them this enriching childhood full of just like the best memories and you know connection with me and my kids Mm -hmm. however i have learned through this journey that by not putting myself first in certain circumstances i become my worst self so not only am i my worst self for myself where like i have bad thoughts I, depression anxiety is on an all-time high mm. but i become the worst version of a mother that i can be yeah. so i've realized by putting myself first it just benefits myself and mm. everyone around me okay. and the most important people in my life which are my kids yes you yeah. know and one of the people i look up to it's david goggins and he's such a fitness not like a fitness junkie but he's so um he's so outspoken matters fitness yeah and mental toughness and you i see you 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 work out and i'm like i, I know people ask why is she even a mother of three though? yeah you know you get that like, yeah I do. Why is she even a mother of three though right yeah but for for me i'm really interested in why fitness and what has that done to your mental state yeah yeah well you know i've actually always loved sports like mm-hmm. growing up I'm not 32, but let's say when I was growing up, you know, <laughs> back in the day, um, I back used in the to, day, yeah, you just said back you in the day, yeah, but you know, I feel like there was a huge chunk of my life where I shifted. Yes. But the beginning part of my life, I, sports was like the only thing I was good at. I wasn't good at academics. Um, and back in the, yeah, back in the day, back then, you know, if you weren't good at academics, what are you even doing? You know, you're really frowned upon. What yes. are you even thinking? You're doing photography. Are you okay? Like, are you sure that's what you want to do? But the only thing I felt really passionate about was sports. And I just didn't realize that I could pursue certain things in life Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so anyway fast forward I mean it's something that I've always been passionate about Mm -hmm. fast forward to after having my first baby I was like if I don't get fit and healthy firstly I can't run around after these kids yes but secondly you know I'm I'm really feeling unhealthy I'm really feeling tired I'm feeling I'm not my best self so I decided to get fit and get healthier and Yeah. yeah just 
have a like wake up feeling good about myself and that's i feel like is so important to me because when i feel good about myself just in gen- i generally have project this happiness and like yeah this different aura around me and yeah. it's important also for my kids and i i think it's also important for my kids to develop healthy habits mm-hmm. i don't want them growing up unhealthily i mean whatever happens happens you know um but i really want them to have healthy habits and okay. they learn that from me all right so i'm trying to give my kids the best yes. at the end of the day be my best self all right and that's why it's important yeah, yeah. now to take me way back you know i like yeah. that you're saying way back, way back when. you know we we want to we want to understand how did tatiana grow up you know yeah. what kind of environments were you exposed to what was your foundation growing up you know because yeah. i feel like most people don't know that part about you yeah. and also choosing photography over i'll say now we are lucky if you go and tell your parent i want to be a dancer not much fuss about it exactly. but me back then if yeah. i told my mama I even want to be at a host she'd be like what do these people do how yeah. much do they earn exactly. why not law why not medicine why not engineering exactly. so for you photography and growing up and the kind of foundation that was formed for you growing up so yeah even for me growing up mm-hmm. i mean my parents were great supportive yeah. i also came like they also broke up so you know for me they, i went through a rough patch and Um I think it was really hard. Well, I'm able to reflect back and realize the way I acted in some certain circumstances were a reflection of what I was going through because mm-hmm. of coming from a broken home. However, my parents worked really hard to make sure that they were always, you know, together during family important holidays and important circumstances in in our life. Mm-hmm. So they really made sure to give us the best and put us first, which really set a good foundation for me yeah. as a parent, you know. Um and just in life generally but it, it, they were really supportive of my life generally whatever it is i wanted to pursue they were ready to support me um and when i started looking into photography like you said you know our people around me were really like I, this is ter- like you're not going to make any money from yes. this this is a really bad choice you know putting me down before i had even started luckily my parents were extremely supportive mm-hmm. and they were like go and follow your dreams yeah. we're so- going to support you and they did and i'm lucky i'm here today making a living from that thing that everybody around me was telling me yeah. was not going to make me anything you yes. know yeah. um so i'm really happy to have proved everyone wrong but i'm really happy to have proved myself right oh I good huh? yeah. if not photography what else were you considering what else would set your soul on fire no i wasn't considering anything else yeah. i i had a passion for it and i was going to do it and i did it that's fine well, yeah and i'm had, doing it you had a passion for it you were going to do it and you did it and you still do yes, it you know exactly. but take me back to your family because you've mentioned they broke up at some point yeah. and since i experienced the same for me my experience has always been until now now is when i'm dealing with a lot of a self reflection and yeah. i'm like oh this because you block it yeah. you know you block it and yeah. you normalize it's okay this is but then it does something to you 100%. what did it do to you and how did you navigate so i remember there was a certain point in my prep school life that i became a bully oh. um and you know at that time i just thought i was a bully and i mean you know i i, I actually couldn't understand what was going on if i have a ref- if i reflect back i can see that that's the time my parents split up and i was clearly going through a lot of things and mm-hmm. you know so people they always say hurt people hurt people i guess that's what i was doing so as you're saying you're reflecting now i'm also able to reflect back mm-hmm. and think back at two times of how i behaved um and also it affects the rela- how i i perceive relationships should be now mm-hmm. um and i realized that now with ending my past relationship you know there are certain things can i say it aloud there were yes. certain things that happened in our relationship that i felt were normal because of having that as a past mm-hmm. when you know i'm able to reflect now and be like no actually that that's that, that's, that's not wrong. okay yeah that's it was wrong okay. yeah yeah so you know yeah it's now through self reflection therapy a lot of work on myself that i'm able to look back and kind of yeah just realize why i had those patterns why i thought in in that way and mm. i'm able to kind of better myself at the moment do so. you think our parents know that do you think that they take time also to process the kind of hurt that is inflicted in kids when they go in such an environment i mean i think you know i've mentioned it to my parents in certain ways and it's i don't also want to i don't want to keep talking to them about it because mm. at the end of the day they love me very much i know they didn't want to hurt me they were going through their own things yeah. and i know as a parent myself yeah. you know whatever i've done or the relationship or whatever i'm doing with in in terms of raising my kids yes. i just want what's best for them so i know every parent is going to do something to their kids that hurts them mm. at the end of the day um but i know my parents did their best yeah. you know and i know my parents are sorry for some of the things that happened but at the end of the day it it is not their 
it wasn't their intention. Mm-hmm. They didn't intend to hurt me. Yeah. It was just, it just happened because of their circumstance. Yeah, not to make an excuse, but I kind of feel for parents sometimes because mm-hmm. I wonder how they process that also. Yeah. Coming from a place where therapy wasn't normalized. Okay. where And mm-hmm. you see sometimes we view our parents as these big giants who could not make mistakes. You know? Exactly. And I was yeah. just going back and I was like, my mom had me when she was, I think, 20 or something. Like maybe even before 20. Yeah. How did she call? I've yeah. always wondered. Oh God. Even going through it now, sometimes I wonder, because even my mom, would be like you know i'm so sorry i've said it before and i mean you don't you really don't have to apologize i think at some point we need to stop don't get me wrong acknowledge acknowledge what happened acknowledge Mm. how it made you feel and how you know yeah acknowledge it but also at some point we need to realize we need to release our parents unless i mean there's like Mm. physical abuse and things like that i mean don't you know but i mean if they were just doing their best and you got hurt from some of the things that happened Mm. like sometimes we need to just forgive and forget and move on and extend grace extend grace it's hard we're going to do something that hurts our kids all of us as we're just doing our best we just win out. That yeah. part is hard though. Because yeah. I just feel like our parents didn't know where to go. We know where to yeah. go. I'm not making excuses for them, but we know where to go. True. We we can sit with a therapist and just have conversations. But for them, I'm like, yeah. if they're watching, maybe if there are people who are watching and their parents, I would really love to know how, why am They're, I getting emotional about this thing now? Yeah, but It's hard. Yeah. It must be so hard. But I mean, I... Yeah, I even even as we have people to speak to, I feel like there's still things that happen mm-hmm. that are not out of our control. Yes, and, but I mean, life happens. Life. We're talking about life, lifeing. Li- life, 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 life. Right? <laughs> And it's it's yeah we mentioned that earlier yeah. and you were like like there are times when life will life and then there life. are times when life will yeah. life exactly you know what what, what 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 would you consider moments where life has life <laughs> for you <What>? like life <laughs> has lived for you honestly so there was a point in time mm. where good things my business is growing i'm opening up like i'm doing new things i'm challenging yes. myself i'm getting new work opportunities but it's impossible for me to juggle all the roles that I have as, you know, a mom. Like, I'm, I'm grateful for the support I have, but yes. I'm a single mom. So doing everything for my kids, trying to juggle my business, trying to juggle my life. Mm. Just generally, I there was a point in time where things were getting too much. Things were getting too much, too quick. And, you know, I, as much as I can say they were good things because I loved what was happening, yes. I just couldn't juggle them all. And I felt like I was dropping all the balls mm. because I wasn't able to concentrate on one thing you know it's impossible to put them up all at the same time so what i've learned is just to prioritize sometimes i'm going to be doing really well at my business and i might not be doing 100 percent at mothering but to know they have the Mm. support they need and they're okay sometimes Mm -hmm. i'll be doing 100 percent at mothering and my business will have to take a back seat Mm -hmm. you know sometimes i have to prioritize myself and that's Mm. going to be 100 percent, and everything else is going to be at 80. Mm. um yeah and i've just learned how to manage that and i'm luckily i'm thankfully able to now hire a virtual assistant to help me take things off my plate and you know things are evolving and I'm able to handle life better yeah but there was a point where yeah life was seriously lifing and I was just failing at everything because I I didn't know how to pick up Mm. which ball to pick up and how to go about it but does it amaze you that you have these great partners wanting to work with you like a hundred percent a hundred percent I mean I'm so grateful for the work that comes in um some have been really terrible to work with, I'm not going to lie, yes, and, yes. and they're, they demand too much mm. and underpaying, undervaluing, and yeah. things like that. But there are clients that I work with that are fantastic, and I love what I do because I'm flexible. I get to spend time with my kids, yes. watch them grow up, as well as work alongside my kids and mm. get my job done. And I get to travel and try out new restaurants, and you know, I'm living my passion. Yeah. I'm living the things I'm passionate about. So I'm so lucky and I'm so grateful yes. for what I'm doing. God, and yeah. it's good before we move on to the creatives that are watching. Because for me, I, I feel like people just want to use you at some point yeah. and they feel like, like, let me give you an example. There's an organization that wanted to work with me to create breast cancer awareness and I'm all things like, I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do all this awareness. Yeah. But they have all these activities going on and then you ask them, do you have a budget for me? They're like, no, we don't have a budget. We wanted to do this pro bono. And I'm like, so how do you think I'm going to survive in life? You mm-hmm. know. So for the creatives that are working, 
uh, that are watching at what point is it okay to say no i can't do this because i'm at that level i love yeah. working with a small group of partners yeah. so that i can be able to give my all but then there are those people i've had to say no to yeah. and i feel like the approach was just wrong because it's lean there's a lot of humanitarian work going around she's just gonna do this for us for free, for free. and yeah. i feel like that's really wrong it's wrong i mean i hate clients who approach me like that and it's mm. downright rude it's degrading it's yes. disrespectful um and before in the past i think i would take on a lot of these kind of jobs because i was like i need to grow i mean you know this this so and so this huge company wants me oh fantastic i i we need to do this yeah. you know and i'd give all of that's also part of the problem mm-hmm. i would give all of me and get be getting nothing in return or yes. sometimes yeah so i just learned that if i don't value myself who's going to who's going to value me mm. um and i also i felt the need to take a step in my career and becoming more like drawing more boundaries because i just felt like if if that's what i'm telling my kids don't let people walk all over you i want you to be strong value yes. yourself and i'm not doing the same thing um that's what they're going to be learning yeah. more so than mm. what i'm telling them they learn from what i'm doing not what i'm telling them mm. so i just decided one day and also i have to fund our entire lifestyle yeah. so i decided one day just you know there's no way i'm going to accept this anymore if you're going to come and talk to me please mm. talk to me with respect number yes. one and a rate uh, card and, uh, yeah and here's my rate card mm-hmm. and you know if this is not possible then we move at the end of the day sometimes that's not always possible because you know we don't have a stand uh, industry standard we don't have people here only want one one um they want to work on you with for one campaign yes. they don't want these long term things mm-hmm. so for us it's really hard sometimes because we have to be able to keep getting jobs to just sustain our lives like yeah. we're living paycheck to paycheck it's yeah. not like we have monthly income checks mm-hmm. so sometimes it's hard but i've learned since doing it i've started standing up for myself and people actually do respect me um and those who i've let go just weren't yes. for me and bigger companies who do respect me will come mm-hmm. along mm-hmm. um And yeah, I know it's hard, but you have to stand up for yourself. Otherwise, mm. otherwise you'll, there, yeah. you'll, you'll be famous and broke at the yeah, same exactly. time. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm <laughs> broke. Yeah. You'll be famous and broke. And I say that's not, nah, I'm, that's I'm not, never going to yeah. be famous and broke. No, exactly. sorry. It's not worth it. No, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. But yeah. you have a great following, you know, and you I people do. love you. Your fans love you. But have you ever had to cave to the societal pressure? Because I'm um, this person, I'm an influencer. Now. Mm-hmm. I don't like the term influencer. And neither do I. Yeah, I'm a change maker and people are following me and they are following what I'm doing. Have you ever felt the need to show up as a different version of yourself? Did you ever feel that pressure at some point? Um, I have mm-hmm. in terms of the way in which I create my content. Like yeah. I I would say I've I've always been open, honest and like vulnerable with what I talk about. Mm-hmm. And I think I I I really enjoy doing that because I get to meet a huge community of moms who are going through something similar. Yes. So we help each other out. I'm able to like start the conversation, things that people are like, you know, people it's been taboo. I've never actually heard somebody talk about this. Um I'm so glad you spoken up because it makes me feel like I'm not alone. So I've loved connected mm-hmm. connecting with the moms that I do or even everyone who follows me. Yes. However, There are times where I go through other people's pages, you know, doom scrolling as we do, and then you're like this person has created the most amazing content or this mm. photo looks amazing and their whole pe- their whole feed is just aesthetically pleasing yeah. in one tone and blah, blah, blah. I want that life someday. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks great. Yeah, but is it? But yeah, but I mean maybe it's great for you. I had to really learn that. You yes. know, stop thinking about what I should be doing and create content the way I started because mm. I love what I talk what I'm talking about. Good. I love the value that I'm giving, the mm. value that I'm getting. I love starting these conversations. That's what's important to me. Yes. I have to keep going back to the importance of why I started and mm. the love of why I started. Because it's so easy to look at somebody else's page, somebody who's kidless, who is living a completely different lifestyle, um, you know, have this whole curated beautiful page. Great car. Yeah, yes. great car. like, you know, okay, that's great for them. Appreciate mm. it, but that's not my lifestyle and I'm happy with the content I create. And at the end of the day, it's about value more so than aesthetics yes. for me. Quality for what I want it exactly. Okay, I love that. Yeah. Let's talk about motherhood because yeah. I know a lot of people that will be tuning in. You said you are able to be authentic with your conversation which make yeah. people want to open more with yeah. you. Yeah. But we woke up 
again one day and you know you have this beautiful family with yeah. your ex-partner yeah and man i don't know what is it with us and couple goals you know because it was so beautiful and then to hear that's no more yeah. it broke a lot of people's hearts you know yeah. and of course what i love is you're very respectable about this situation Thank so you. did is it something that you saw coming is it something that caught you off guard yeah. and is it that you really wanted a family and also back to your family growing up yeah. and coming from a broken home yeah. I, I, I saw that if you're coming from a broken home you really want your family to work out yes. because you don't yeah. want to have to go through the brokenness that yeah. was there when you were growing up so how in your own words and what you're comfortable in mm. could you take us through that phase I mean I think I did definitely saw it coming mm. at the point where when we ended things mm. because yeah you know we've been going through things for the past six seven years however long we've been together so i definitely saw it coming and in fact the time that it happened i had been through heartbreak before in this relationship you know and the time that it happened i think my body was just so ready that i didn't actually go through heartbreak i didn't go through that um yeah i didn't go through that so it was it was a great way to kind of get over that relationship because mm-hmm. i wasn't going through something so tough and i um But yeah, I definitely did stay a lot longer because I wanted my kids to be in one happy family. Um, and it's really hard when you have kids involved because you're just thinking like, but am I going to ruin their lives? You know, how are they, are they going to grow up without X, Y, Z? Are they going to grow up hurting because of this? Like, I'm hurting my kids. But, you know, you come to the re- realization that if you don't put yourself first, you're, you're also like a shell of the mother or the person that you can be mm-hmm. in that relationship. Yeah. Um, and what's worse, for them to have this... mom who's doing their best um ha- being their best selves being the best mom they can be or to just have that shell of a mom in a relationship just to keep it together not to hurt them mm. so i really had to make an eff- like a conscious effort to just you know finally end it and um i'm i'm happy with where we are today and i am just doing the best mm. that i can for my kids that yeah. you can you know yeah. but allow me just to touch on this because you go into a relationship with someone three kids later on yeah. and you're like this is the love of my life right yeah. and then you look back one plus one is not two yeah. would you say would you say you should have taken time to know this person better or before is there having before having yeah. the babies i definitely i mean i would if you're going to if you want kids in life there are so many things you should do before you get into a serious relationship i mean these are discussions you should have early on because yeah. it's very hard firstly to have these difficult conversations when you're already like in love you're living together and then you're now starting to have these conversations you realize wait you you want to do what like you want to discipline my kids yes. how or you want to you know whatever the conversations might be i mm-hmm. think these are so important to have early on especially if you know you're going to have kids mm-hmm. you know if that's your end goal these conversations need to be had immediately so you're on the same page because yeah. once you have kids it is it is so hard apparently the first year of having a child is like the hardest on a relationship mm-hmm. um, it will test you in a lot of ways you know there's a new person in town your all your energy your love everything is going on to this one person yes. your relationship is really taking a hit yeah. you know you have to be very intentional with your relationship um, so you definitely have to be on the same page mm-hmm. before you get into a serious relationship with somebody if yeah. you want kids yeah. um, I would definitely suggest that however having said that I know a lot of people who have been on the same page but having kids changes you in a lot of ways you grow you're forced to grow in so many ways and if you're not ready for that yeah it's it's going to be a bit tough you know Mm -hmm. um there's a lot of work to be done i think couples therapy couples counseling is really important um being able to take time for yourselves being able to set date nights and things like that to make sure that your relationship stay strong mm. um, is really important um, yeah. so yeah i would definitely suggest doing a lot of work before that before that yeah. and lastly because i don't want to dwell in this conversation but you also posted that it's been hard for you doing this as a single mom you yeah. know and the question i saw people asking is is the dad not present yeah. to help you out with yeah. some chores or some dude or some like is there no support coming uh, in for you no unfortunately not 
you know, the thing that I'd want to say is like, there is so much support coming from my family and oh, even his family. Yes. So, uh, but let's even just talk about my dad firstly. Like he is... Oh, I love yeah. her. Because you were like <laughs> texting your dad before we started and like, let me just text my dad. Yeah. I mean, I need some you. So guys, if you need something and you talk so much, you talk so highly of your yeah. dad, you know? My family is amazing. Yeah. My family is truly amazing. I, I, they would drop anything mm. to, if I'm in a situation where I need my kids to be helped with something, they'll drop it. Mm-hmm. They'll drop anything. However, having said that, you know, my dad has has been the, like MVP. I don't know how to say it. Like yes. he's literally there every day for my kids. So he really steps up for me in ways like um, if I need them to be taken to school, like when they were in school, or if I need them to go to the dance class, he's there. Yes. If I Helping me with homeschooling, he's there. Mm. So he's there for everything. Um, I think more so it's in those times where I'm just like, there's no one who can understand what you're going through apart from somebody who's going through the exact same thing. Yes. And that's where I'm just like, I'm so angry sometimes. Because I'm like, generally I'm fine and I'm happy with where that I'm, I've chosen to be a single mom, you yes. know. But there are those moments where I'm sick, three kids are sick, we're all spending night, we're all in bed together, yeah. everyone is sick calling my name. I, I just, I, I'm so unwell. And th- that person who's supposed to be helping me is not there. Mm. And that's where I'm just, like, I'm so angry. angry. And then it's more so those moments where I'm, I'm feeling so stretched. I I stopped go, I stopped them going to your normal school. I yes. started homeschooling because I couldn't manage drop off here, drop off there, pick four up hours here, a pick day, up yeah, there. to myself. I have to pick up there, pick up here after school activities. I was waking up at three o'clock in the morning to be able to get work done mm. because I'm doing everything my own. And not only that, it's the mental load, having to think of breakfast, lunch, and dinner who's going to be picking up, where they're going, the scheduling, like the mental load of taking care of kids yes. is not shared mm. with anybody. It's it's all on me. And yeah. that's, those are the moments where I, yeah, I'm just so angry about it. Yeah, And it just hits me again. Not that I miss having a partner, but I just, yeah, I would love to be able to share that load with, with, with someone. Yeah. But then because you're doing single motherhood and yeah. I've seen one of the things that go with people who are doing like single motherhood, they are a bit bitter at some point yeah. because you're like, I shouldn't be doing this yeah, by myself. But when yeah. the kids now come and say, mommy, I want to talk to daddy. Yeah. How do you handle that? Or does yeah. he even talk to the kids? So ours, our situation is a bit complicated. Mm. However, um, yeah, they haven't really had very much communication and yeah. I wish it could be different. Um, my kids, especially Olive, my oldest one, Aww. misses their dad a lot. You know, they, they, I mean, Nova, I don't know if I want to say luckily, yes. but Nova was born and their dad wasn't around. Yeah. So she doesn't know any different. Yeah. Marley, my, she's a four-year-old. Yeah. I feel like, she, you know, she has her moments. But it's not really understood as much as Olive. as Olive. So there are moments where she asks and, you know, there's only so many times I can keep saying the same thing. Yes. So it has been quite a difficult journey. Like there are times where she, you know, she's, she's had a really hard time. She's had a really hard time. And I think that's also why school was really difficult for her when mm-hmm. she started um, her school at the beginning of this year. It was really difficult. Yes. She went through separation anxiety. Then Marley went through separation anxiety. So yeah, it's been tough and I, I'm just doing my best to keep them confident and just to let them know that they're loved. No mm-hmm. matter what, everyone loves them. Sometimes, my friend gave me this technique every yes. day, ask them who who loves you. So they'll list mom, Aww. dada, d- granddad, yeah. grandma, yeah. my nanny. Like they'll <laughs> list everyone. Yes. You know? So I just want them to know, no matter the situation, mm. they're loved. Yes. Um, uh, love that they have such a support system everyone is there for them everyone Mm. loves them and that's what's important yeah in in circumstances where maybe you've had all the reasons to say negative things about your partner and shade them in whichever way uh, what has kept you grounded what has because I was like what don't you I don't want to talk negatively about anyone you know you are so straightforward with that but what has kept you grounded because I know it'll hurt my kids yeah you know, I mean, I wish I could be petty, not just about this situation, <laughs> but about so many things. In life. Yeah, there's so many times I'm like, ah, if I could just put it on my story and just out you, you know, like just just talk about it. I mean, mm. I could, I really could, and I would love to, but I don't want to hurt my kids. Yeah. My kids are the most important things to me, and mm-hmm. they are they come first. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, what my situation with their dad has nothing to do with them, and I never want them to when they're I don't know. Even now, Olive and Molly can understand everything. I don't want them to find a video of me doing anything yes. saying anything or i don't want to talk to them about mm. it badly like i'm not putting any emotional stress on them they're already going through enough yeah. and i know how 
how hurt they are with the situation mm. and i just don't want to hurt them more yeah i yeah. love i think i love that you know because mm-hmm. this is the internet and things will just it's gonna Stay be forever. here forever yeah. and that's what my yeah. parents did that's why yes. and they were a really great example as much as at the beginning they fought a lot when they separated you mm. know there was no love but yes. they really worked through it to make sure mm. that they put us first and yeah. i think that was a really great example for, and i know how much it meant to us to have them both together at christmas like that we didn't need anything like that's for us that was just the most amazing thing yeah. you know so i think that really meant a lot to me and i i would like to do the same for my and kids and that's what yeah. you want to do but since you yeah. came out i can only imagine the number of single mothers that are approaching you even single dads that yeah. are approaching you what do you tell them Honestly, a lot of people are like, I don't know what to do. Can you give me advice? Uh, you know, my baby daddy did X, Y, Z, or should I leave him? And for me, I'm like, I really can't put myself in anybody's shoes, you know? Um, so I think it's really difficult for me to answer those questions because I don't want to be the cause of of anything. I, you know, this is people's, people have Business. kids. Yeah, this is your whole, kids' lives. In, in Yeah, I'm not going to be putting myself in into those conversations because yeah. I just find it so difficult. I have not gone through that relationship. I don't know what you've gone through for the past 10 years of your life. Yes. Um, so, but for me, all I can do is share my experience and just share the reasons in which I decided to make this my life mm. and, um, yeah, share my journey. That's mm-hmm. all I can do. I really hate getting into those conversations. Yes. Yeah. How ha- have you healed? Or is it like a moment each day it's just a step towards that direction? No, I'm I'm fine. Literally the day I made that decision, I was like, yeah, we're done. <sighs> we're done. Um, and I think it's also been very helpful that he hasn't been around. I think if it was in my face all the time, that might, might have been mm. a bit difficult. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, I think our relationship had just come to an end and we were ready to move on. And, mm. you know, at that time I was moving into my new house um a lot was going on so i just felt really positive i, I was like there's a lot of good things mm. so yeah and more yeah. to come and more to and come more, Amen. no and no yeah. honestly more 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 great things to come yeah. like i can't wait Thank like you. i can't wait Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> true story you're just so authentic you know you're just so authentic and you're just so vulnerable and i just like the way everyone keeps cheering you on and they just I have the best support online mm. like people are so encouraging so supportive so which is what i'm there actually there's a time that i feel like i use my social media as a crutch you know i'm telling you i didn't have that support in somebody yes. but i'd be on socials like i'm super sick the kids are sick i don't know what it is and people would be like you got this tatiana you in my dms a hundred more messages you got this you, girl you're so strong yeah. we love you blah blah and yeah. i'd be like you know what this is amazing yeah some people always ask me like why do you share so much and i think you know maybe there was a time that i i wouldn't say oversharing i think i needed that I, I needed that support at that time. Mm. Um, so I think now I, I've become a little bit more, I, I've drawn up a, a few more boundaries, I'd say. However, I, I love the support and encouragement from mm. everyone on my social media. Yeah, They're it's, amazing. No, nah, it's huge. I was yeah. just going through a couple of posts and I'm like, God, it's like everyone wants you to win. Yeah, you know? everyone wants me yeah, yeah. And it's, it's nice. They're amazing. It's, <laughs> yeah. No, it's beautiful. No, I, I love that for you. I want to see that for you, you know. But we're also coming at an age where women are getting so much attacked because of choosing to be single moms yeah. and stuff like that. There's always this, like, you should have made it work yeah. because of the kids and stuff like that. You yeah. have kids, you should have made it. What do you want to say about that? A hundred percent, no. A hundred percent, I do not believe in that. And, you know, I, there was so, I mean, I, you see, it's hard for me when I can't, you know, disclose some of the things yes. that happened, you know, yeah. but I shouldn't have to put up with some of those things and that shouldn't have to be my life. Like, I deserve to be happy mm. and my kids deserve to be happy. They, my kids deserve a happy mom. Um, and for me, I'm not going to, I, I, I mean, we're only living one life and then you expect me to live my whole life just being unhappy because I should stay because no we're not going to do that yeah. we're not going to do that we're not going we're yeah. really choosing yeah we're, we're choosing, choosing us you see that's what I'm saying yeah. you are teaching it's like a whole movement of can you choose yourself yes. you know can you just show up for yourself yeah. can you create time for yourself you know but let me ask therapy a hundred percent I'm even looking for therapy for my kids in oh. fact I just haven't found the right one I guess mm. but I think the sooner we can start the better and it doesn't have to be when we're going through something major I love that yeah it yeah. should be a part of our lifestyle and I and I recognize that you know there are a lot of 
people who think that therapy might cost too much mm. you know at first i think it's one of our it, it should be a priority so i mean i know there are some of us who can go out clubbing and spend the same amount of money yes. that you're going to spend on a therapy session yeah. or more mm. so it's just about priorities and number two there are a lot of people out there who are very affordable and um you know like for example lydia lydia she always talks about Therapy, therapy. therapists yeah with different price ranges yes. and things like that so i think we just need to prioritize that a little bit more and okay. not just reach the point of complete like do before mm. we seek somebody mm. you know there I are know. so many tools that we can learn you can learn yeah Can I go you yeah yeah because yeah, yeah, you know, I, mean, yeah, i feel like we, we we do therapy for ourselves as adults yeah. and then we forget kids are hurting yeah. and kids are observers they yeah. observe a lot of things yeah. and then they block and then they become adults like us who have now to reflect 30 years later exactly. what happened to me so i think as ma- if you can afford I, I would urge parents to do that. 100%. Yeah. I, I don't have the mental capacity. Oops, mm, sorry. I don't have the right. mental capacity mm. to deal with some of the things my kids are dealing with, you know? And that's also because I'm going through my own thing. Yes. So there are, it reaches a point where I would just like them to be able to talk, let out their feelings, gain some tools to be able to handle this going forward. Yeah. Um, like you said, kids go through things. I feel like a lot of parents just believe you know our kids are there they they obviously don't go through things adults go through they must do this they must like that we're just so i don't know what the word is but yeah. i just feel like we need to also extend more grace to our kids and just understand that they go through just as much as we go through they yes. just don't have a way to communicate mm. it and now we're able to put them in a scenario where they're going to learn healthy happy Good. habits to nice. deal through life i yeah. love that and i'm wishing you well you Thank and you. your happy beautiful Thank family you. really wishing you well but let's talk about the critics too because yeah. i couldn't help but I notice it. people got at me you know me i'm used to this but i'm just i keep telling people whether you do good or you do bad people are going to talk eventually people, people are going to hate yeah. you know but then sometimes it gets to you you could be there like oh. no it doesn't aff- you know you know it affects yeah. you sometimes yeah. the critics how have you dealt with that part of your life yeah, so and the cyber bullies it's been hard it's been hard actually it's been a hard journey mm. um especially at the beginning when my page started growing and people would message me um yeah it was really hard and you know they could be one literally 100 positive comments and they could be one negative comment in that whole thing mm. and that's the only one that's stuck in my head yes. um and it just really gets you down it's like firstly what have i done to you to be talking to me like that mm. um and then i think especially if you're not a confident confident in yourself and you have a lot of things about yourself that you wish to improve yes. that's when those affect you more so because they're touching on those nerves mm-hmm. they know exactly what they're doing yes. you know, they'll touch on something that you're yes. insecure about yes. and that's where it really hurts mm. so for me i i really develop i started to develop thicker skin when it comes to people talking about me however when somebody will say something about my children or the way in which i'm parenting my children that's when now it yes. still affects me because yeah. that's my most insecure Thing. you know as mm. parents everything you're wondering if you're doing it wrong if you're doing it right um and for me that's when it really affects me mm. so i'm really trying to learn to let go of it just to understand it's a projection of somebody else clearly you know if somebody's like i if somebody hates on me for something it's just because yes. they're lacking that in their life and yeah. they now want to start mm. you know so i i i know that logically now it's just to connect my brain and my heart at mm. those times mm. um so i'm i'm starting to develop thicker skin yes it still affects me it still it still, it still yeah. does just which people would be more kinder yeah i don't understand how like how, what happens how do you get on there and you're like i'm going to i'm going to tell her x y z you know yes. of course we all have thoughts about maybe somebody's outfit or whatever yeah. well, i'm not going to sit there and like now start writing about mm. it why would i why, why, why would i do that why would i do that yeah. you know but because you know social media platforms sometimes you look back and you're like okay maybe i shouldn't have done that do you regret putting your family and your love life out there and would you do it differently no regrets mm. no regrets you know i mean obviously there are days where you think about it and you're like oh the whole world knows you know <laughs> Yes. You know, yeah, there are times where you think about that, but honestly, I'm I'm so grateful for this journey and it's there is strength in vulnerability and I think that's where people think, oh god, now everyone knows, you know, you must be so embarrassed. No, everyone is going through something. Obviously, yeah. a lot. Yeah. I'm even worse. Yeah, you know. Like, even worse. Yeah, you people know? are going through those bad marriages. Yes. People are and they're just putting up bra- like putting up mm. it's I think it's brave to yes. be able to come out and be like, yeah, I made a mistake or yes, this didn't work out. 
And then what? That's yeah. just part of life. Yeah, and I feel like once you own your story, no one is going to even attack. Because exactly. I owned it. So whatever you're saying is not even a bonus exactly. right now. People already know. So what extra information are you giving people? Exactly. You just go on your page and you give this extra information that they want to give out there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But if, if he comes back to your kid's life, would you let them associate? A hundred percent. I would I would love for them to have a relationship with their dad. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Right, let's move to what keeps you going. My kids everything yeah. is my kids. Like, <laughs> my kids keep me going. You yeah. Know, honestly, I a lot changed for me. You know, I think before my kids I was just I was earning money, but I'd just be spending it on the weekends, party girl, not really serious with life. I mean, I enjoyed my life, but yes. I wasn't really serious. And I think they really, they they helped me grow into mm. this person that I am today with so many goals and so many, you know, I'm so much stronger. Like, it's insane how your kids can make you the strongest person you've ever been, but then also make you like the weakest because, you know, you're wearing your heart on your sleeve every day. Um but yeah, they, they really keep me going and mm. they've helped me reach places that I, I don't think I would have reached if yeah. I didn't have them. Yeah. And you yeah. know, like, Mama, I'll leave, Mama, I'll leave. Oh my God, they're literally <laughs> the best. But also, like, yeah. I love what I do. Like, mm. I wake up every day and I, sure, there are days where I'm like, oh, I, I really don't feel like it. But I love what I do. I love photography. Yes. I love um, social media content creation. Mm. I love traveling. Mm. I love eating food. I love what I do. Yeah. So it also keeps me going. Okay. Yeah. And if they watch this like 10 years later, what would you want them to know about their mom? Oh, that <laughs> everything I do, I'm doing for you, number one. And I'm sorry for whatever I've screwed up. Well, I'm sorry, you know, it wasn't intentional. <laughs> Uh, what would I want you to know? Yeah. I hope that they feel okay with them having been on my social media because, it, you know, it's a black and white area. Mm. Or is it, sorry, it's a gray area. It's a gray area. Um, and, you know, I, I hope I'm doing the right thing. I love what I do and I love that I get to do it with them and mm. they're loving it as much as their kids. Um, and I hope I did the right thing. So yes. I hope this is not the one thing that I didn't do well. Mm. But just to know that I've done it with love yeah. and um, I've really enjoyed, yeah, I've really enjoyed doing it with them. Yes. Yeah. And there's more to come. And there's more to come, there are yeah. more moments to come. Yeah. Yes, you know. Wow, yeah. yeah, let's talk about your most memorable photography moment. Oh, working with the Northern Rangelands Trust. Yes. And so I went to Samburu and I was doing this like photography um, for their website. And I think that was one of my most memorable mm. trips. I, mm-hmm. I think it was also one of my first with... Olive was really young and she, while she got to come with me, yes. she had to stay at the house while I was out yeah. uh, on location. So it was the first time I had ever had to leave her. So it was a huge nerve wracking, like I was scared. My emotions were just like this. I was having fun. I yeah. loved what I was doing. I was back into photography. I was yeah. traveling. Mm-hmm. I was taking these amazing shots, learning so much while my baby was like at a house nearby and I was really scared for her and for me and if she was okay and yeah it was just a very memorable trip Mm. and all in all it went really well I love some of my best photos to date and um, it was a great experience yeah Yeah. that was a great experience who are some of the people you look up to who do I look up to you know there's a lot to Mm. be fair I don't I don't think there's somebody I could just be like this one person Mm. I think there's so many people who have different attributes that I really really like Mm. um so for example you know my parents firstly Mm. I mean I think they've done an amazing job Mm. and even just being as supportive as they are to date like you know my mom is constantly texting us good luck today oh my god your following just went from 142 to 143 no way yeah always (laughs) know so supportive so i love the fact that they have been so supportive and set that tone for me to just Mm -hmm. be encouraging and supporting Mm -hmm. supportive of my kids i've done some crazy things in my life you know and my parents are always ready to support me (laughs) so that number one Mm -hmm. um you know there's just so many people that i i get different things yeah like my guka my guka has been (laughs) just he's such an amazing like gentleman you know you know when you think about men i feel like i think I think quite negative thoughts about men. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not, I know not all men, but I just feel like there's a lot of, you know, yes. playing around and a lot of like doing illegal things or like cutting <laughs> shortcuts. And, you know, yeah, I yeah. don't know. Men, I just, I don't know. <laughs> Even women, okay? Yeah. But my Guka is such yeah. a stand up mm-hmm. gentleman, mm. you know, somebody who really is loyal. Yeah. He's just a great family man. My Shusho has Alzheimer's. Yes. So, she, oh. but he is with her. She's at the stage where she doesn't know Nobody. anybody. 
feeding through a tube, all that. Mm. He is with her every single day. Uh-huh. And, you know, we ask him, you know, like, why, you know, not why, but, you know, what is it that's pushing you to be here when you could be out doing, you know, X, Y, Z? And he's like, he gave, she gave me the best years of my life. Oh. So why would I not be here for these when she that's needs so me? That's so beautiful. Yeah. Like, I want to cry. Oh, my God. <laughs> I you feel know? like that's what everyone needs yeah. in life to have someone who can hold you in exactly. your older years exactly. when you can't remember anything but they won't leave you exactly you know? he's just there <gasps> every day and I just it's so beautiful so that that's something that makes you know that's, yes. some, that's an attribute I'd love you know I'd love to mm. what is the word emulate yeah. <laughs> um, you know uh, yeah my I, I, so many people my shusha and my oma so my yes. both my grandparents my grandmas they were go-getters they were take no nonsense i am um, you know own, owned a company built a company from scratch my grandmother went like a very young age went to ethiopia to marry the man of her dreams Ooh. um you know to have my mom and her siblings yes. you know uh, my shusha traveled the world left left her kids for one year and was like i'm out i'm now going uh, let to me go explore and, yeah yes. now it's my time and <laughs> yes. you're like too bad whatever yeah, you know yeah. Uh, rally car driver photographer like Ooh. I just feel like my grandmothers were just such forces to be reckoned with and yeah. they just take no nonsense like yeah. you can't talk to her any, talk to them any way you wanted yes I love More that power to them. yeah exactly That's so good you know um, <laughs> it's like so a scene from a movie you yeah. know yeah honestly I wish I wrote their books when I had like mm. when I could talk to them I yeah. wish I we, yeah they were just amazing women Um, so I just think like a lot of family members, there are yes. so many things about them that I just draw strength from. And, and look at you now. Yeah, yeah you're like a, com- a replica of your uh, grandma. Oh, I stuff. hope so. Nah, truthfully, you know. Yeah. But favorite Kenyan artist, I can't let you go without, oh without my us getting to know what makes you her favorite Kenyan artist. Oh my God, that is so difficult. I just, mean... Just what? Just one. Just no, you one. can't let me have <laughs> <it. I need laughs> two. Let me give you three. Okay, okay, okay. Fine. <laughs> okay. Firstly, yeah. I'd say Sauti Soul. Oh, you know, cool. like you know, I love them. I love yes. their music. There was a time in the ne- when I was in the Netherlands yeah. where everyone is just like playing this popular music, which yes. was great. But I got to come in there with Sauti Soul, yeah. and I'd be like, listen to this, these cool people. You yeah. know, like this cool Kenyan. Yeah. yeah. So I, it just made me feel like kind of proud. Mm-hmm. Um, Karen, Karen Gari, yes. like yes. she is amazing. She's phenomenal. Her voice is just beautiful. I love that she's also a single mama yeah. of a boy and she's like yes. the way she raises her. Yes. She's firstly also my cousin. <laughs> I'm just going to check. Yeah, Karen is my cousin. And you know the way you say Karen, some people will think it's Karun, my okay, people. Karun, yeah. Karun, Karun is your Gari. cousin. Yeah. So, yeah. Say hi to Karun. She knows. She, 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 she watches. Yeah, does she? Yeah, yes, she does. amazing. Yes. Hi, Karun. Yes, yeah, I so... love her. I love her. Our second cousin's cousin. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I love her so much. Yeah. But I genuinely love how she is, how she's evolved. Um, we were doing the same journey together of having a child. And, you know, our lives were just changing so much. And our kids are two weeks apart. Yes. Yeah, two weeks or two months apart. Yeah. So we were really, you know, we, we were at a point in time. And I just, I really... I really love the way she, in which she's handled herself and yes. her career yeah. and the way in which like Prince is all over with her and all these gigs I, and like in the studio mm-hmm. and like I love that. Yes. Like it, I really draw inspiration from yes. that. I love um, her. Yeah, oh, yeah, she's great. Last one. Yeah. Can I say Nyashinsky? Oh, yeah, of course. Like you. music is amazing. Yes. His music is just he's, fantastic. He's beautiful. Yeah. He's beautiful. Yeah, he's beautiful he's, too. He's a beautiful soul. Yeah. He's a, all those ones are my favorite. Yeah. Oh, good. Yes. Okay, we're together. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we are together. We are together. Yeah. All those ones, they are like my favorite. I love, love. You know, so when people say, oh, Kenyan music, I don't know this, it gets to me. I'm like, you just haven't experienced beautiful music. Exactly. Our artists are doing amazing. Are. I hate this crap of Kenyan music. I don't know. Or, or, like I can't. We are. Uh, yeah. We have to. No, we have to mm-hmm. be able to give credit where it's due. I yes. mean, people are doing amazing things, and also we don't have as many. I, well, I'd like to think I don't know. No, I don't think we have as many opportunities as no, people in don't. the states and we other don't. things. We and don't. look how far and people look how are going. Far, yeah, and know? the amazing things they're doing. Yes. Yeah. So I always like to like cheer them. Every time I get an opportunity, I'm vouching for our Kenyan music scene. Yay. Like I don't care what. Honestly, that part if I start, we won't even finish. Yeah. <laughs> But who do you look after in the creative scene? Oh my gosh, we have so many amazing creatives, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, oh, Truth Snigna, his photography and yes. videography. Yes. Oh my goodness. Um, you know, you were just talking about Murugi. Like, yeah. she is a force to be reckoned with. You no, know, somebody. Is. Yeah, when you're thinking about what my Instagram. Unapologetically, yeah. Mm-hmm. When I'm thinking about my Instagram and how I want it to grow yes. and just how she's built that, like, you know, connection with her audience. I, I mean, 100%. Yes. That's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
we talked about Lydia, you know, yes. the way she's built her space into wellness and just, you know, really encouraging people to seek help and, yeah, just and be she, a positive source. And she walks the talk. Yeah, she uh, walks the talk. I she really like that. She walks the yeah. talk. Like, I just look at her and I'm like, ah, oh, we had a beautiful conversation. I just, I just love her. Yeah, she's amazing. Yes, I really, yes. what I, I just feel always, mm. like, positive vibes coming yeah. from her page, which I mm. really, really like. Mm. Um... Uh, I know it's not social media, but I like my two of my best friends, yes. like Sony and Noni, they yeah. are doing amazing things. Like one is working in BBC and handling wow. all, yeah, she's uh, just fantastic and somebody I look up to. And mm. then Sony, as, as much as, you know, content creation yes. isn't her main yeah. job, I just yeah. really like also how she does it because she's very honest. You know, mm. giving a food review or something, you'd, you'd go to somebody's page and everything is positive, positive, positive. She's not afraid to be, to tag the place give her honest opinion not in a rude way yeah but i mean it's honest the things she likes the things she doesn't like mm. and i really appreciate somebody who's able to be out there and be honest about and be honest it. yeah yeah um yeah it's good now yeah. we are getting we are getting a feel of your world you know yeah yeah we are getting a feel we are getting a feel of your music the people who inspire you where you seek inspiration from that's nice yeah i mean you my know? music to be mm. honest my music the music <laughs> is like old school rock that's really? my music like uh, early life 2000s house, rock simple plan Coldplay. all american rejects yes oh hey. yeah hey. oh yeah i mean i could go on but that's yeah. that, that's my that's yeah my, I, I, my I, I, i'm into rock like honestly yeah, yeah. Th- that's not for me yeah. Who, yeah i like every day but right mm. now if you would ask me like what song is in my head i'd probably mm. tell you like baby shark there's this song water <sighs> it's water what is edgar must know You've not heard this song. Water. It's everyone is even doing a challenge with this song. Oh. Water. Ting, 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 ting. Yeah. Ting, yeah. ting, ting. I can't do the dance, so I've just forgotten about it. Me, the one I want to do. Me, the one I want to do. You are you doing? I no, can't that's can't a challenge I said I must do. Oh. I'll go without doing a challenge. Oh, no, People no, no, no. must remember my waist for something. Oh, my God. <laughs> I will embarrass myself. People will be like, just ah, That is what I want stop. to embarrass myself of. <laughs> I want to trend. Yeah. No. That would count me out. I'll be I there for the ones of like, I don't know. In me, what? I'm also there with the attorney yeah. and then, in me, what? Ah, nah, nah. That one I want to embarrass myself for. But before I let you go, Tatiana, something I want you to do on the show, maybe if you look at that camera and you speak words to yourself. Dear Tatiana, I just want to start by saying I'm so proud of you for overcoming a lot of the things I think you didn't think you would make it through. <sighs> I'm trying to laugh as I say this so that I just, the tears stay back. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I think there's nothing that you aren't able to achieve. If you put your mind and heart to it, you're going to be able to do it. And you've yes. proven yourself of that several times now. Um, I just want you to keep reminding yourself of why you started so that it keeps pushing you to keep doing the things that you love doing. And I just want you to keep reminding yourself of the things that you dreamt of. Yes. So that you know that you are actually have achieved the things that you've dreamt of and to never forget yeah the hard work you're putting into yourself and to never forget to prioritize yourself show yourself grace um, love on yourself and yeah good job pat pat yourself on the back thank you thank you yeah you're an amazing woman and yes i love you good Yeah. you know we forget that part we do we forget, forget that i love you so we yeah. forget i'm proud of you yeah. so sometimes people will be like lean you've done i'm like oh, no, i forget myself so yes. much and yeah. i'm learning that yeah i love me amen you know there's there's someone i love lisa nichols and she was just talking about how she would go on the mirror every for like every day and say seven things to herself wow. dear lisa i'm proud of you dear lisa i forgive you dear wow. like we forget we forget that I love, I'm going to start doing that. Yes, I mean, yeah. I know positive affirmations are important. I mm. do that with my kids. Yeah. But I, I, I don't really, I never, I've never gone to the mirror and be like, yeah, I love you. I'm mm. proud of you. Yeah, yeah I, I love, love that. You. Yeah. I love you. Like, just be there, not like naked, but naked with your soul. And yeah. just be like, I love Or you. Or both. Or both. Yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> yeah, Sit I mean, me in the mirror. Yeah, yeah what could filming. go wrong? Yes, you're yeah. not filming. You know, some of us won't breathe in in the mirror. We'll <laughs> yeah. just be like... <laughs> See, it's the mirror, and we love ourselves. Yes. I've really, I've really f- had an amazing time amazing. having you here. But before I let you go and ask you one final question, yes. is there anything you wanted to touch on that you feel we've left out of today's conversation? Oh, honestly, no. I was, I was a little bit nervous oh. just because I've seen episodes where I, I, I love how people are very yes. vulnerable. So I was, I was anticipating something that maybe I couldn't cross, but yeah. I've had a really good. 
good conversation. Really? I feel like it's been therapeutic. Oh. Like I've, yeah, a little bit of therapy. I've, I've kind of let go, released. Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm ready to get on with my yes. day. Yes. Yes. Um, no, so yeah I'm, yeah, I'm really happy to have yes. been here and to have done this. Good. Yeah. I When I hear that, I feel so good. Because yeah. I just like people telling their stories from their own perspective, not from how I want them to share yeah. their yeah, stories, yeah. you know. But how do you want to be remembered? What legacy are you looking into leaving behind? Wow, I honestly, I was watching, I was listening to something with Oprah where she was like, yes. it's all about, um, what was the word she used? I keep forgetting. It's mm. all about giving value and, oh, I can't remember the words mm. she was saying, but basically, mm. I don't want my life to be about me. I want to be able to give back and I want it, when people come to my page or my platform, I want to have, yeah, just inspired people to maybe make choices that for the better um to, i want my page to have value so they're coming to learn something um to leave a little bit more positive yeah. and yeah i just yeah i want to give value i want to be of service that's what she talked about being of service mm-hmm. i would like to be of service and yeah. um, i don't want to be remembered about anything to do with me yeah you know who said that who? they don't even want their name anywhere who? I, I feel people just think he's controversial he's 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 just i don't want to say he's a human being i feel like that's an excuse people make but kanye said that really yeah kanye said the greatest legacy is to have people forget his name and remember his work wow yeah true story wow. yeah okay he, that's the only thing about me and kanye that are similar yes the rest i would just like to put that on the record the rest I mean, you know. I mean, I will go on record. I love Kanye. Like, really? Yeah, no, not because uh, I was even saying, I don't know if we, we managed to put that on an episode. I feel like he's done a lot of terrible things. Yes. But I also feel like he has done a lot of great things. And in your life existing, you are bound to do both, both. at some point. A hundred percent. So You're I, right. I, I love creative Kanye. Like me, I don't. I know he's done some terrible things. Yeah. But I also go back and see the amazing things that That's He's done, done and he has been a source of inspiration for so many creatives so i like remembering that part that's actually but, a really good point because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day we do we do make wrongs so all of us you're going to do both yeah it's just the intensity yeah you see but, the thing is yes <laughs> it's a family band and for me what like yeah. i have this thing now yeah we're talking to me about kids it. yes For me, that's now where I'm just like, no, nah, I need to draw the line. No, I am with you. Yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah, but yeah. you are right because at the end of the day, we all make mistakes or we mm. all do something wrong and we're always going to hurt somebody in our yes. lives, right? So, yeah, I mean, we should be able to look at somebody for mm. their good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And also pray they come to the realization of what they are doing is not right and yeah. go back to themselves yeah they go back to themselves yeah. you know so th- that's what i'm anyway back to the legacy he yeah. said that he doesn't want people to remember his name but his work yeah, yeah and i feel like that's the part i like leaning on yeah his work that. the creative yeah. aspect eh, yeah. of kanye but yeah. then allow me to let you go thank you thank, you, thank, you, so thank you so much for being vulnerable with us i feel like that's what my audience needed today Thank and you. i feel like people need to own their stories i 100%. feel like the, please don't let these people go and start saying oh wake up today is the day <laughs> own your story yeah own don't your let story don't, yeah. own that if you own your you. story no one else can now talk mm. to you about anything because yes. at the end of the day yeah, yeah. You, you're loud and proud yes. and you know mistakes happen this yeah. strength in vulnerability just yes. yeah don't think just because something has gone wrong mm. then you know yeah of course my audience know where to find you yes <laughs> But for anyone that is watching and they are going through what you've gone through or what you're still going through, yeah. what would be your parting shot to them? And also a reminder of where can they find you? It's okay. already on the screen. Though. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I talk a lot about my motherhood journey on Mama Olive. Yeah. Um, but I did mention to you that I wanted to talk about Motherhood Unplugged just because yes. that is the community I'm building for moms. So there are a lot of moms so that come to the events that I um that I create yeah. um, where we just are able to literally let loose and talk about everything that we're going through mm. and I would really encourage anybody who's a mother to join Motherhood Unplugged because yes. we will be having monthly events some handouts some workshops you know a lot of things will be happening yeah. and if you just want to come and vent and find like-minded moms or just let it out or just have somebody help you out give their experience have some support from people who are going through something similar mm. this is the place and this is yes. what this is the kind of safe community that I'd like to make for moms. I just want us to have a place to go and to be able to just feel seen and heard yes. in a non-judgmental environment. Mm. Um, so I just, yeah, Motherhood Unplugged, at Motherhood Unplugged KE, but everything else I talk about on Mama Olive. Yes. 
uh, yeah, at Mama Olive K. Yeah. And um, that's where you can find me. That's why it's so. Here is to live in a life full of service. Oh, wait. Let me yes. put the L and oh, so people can see. Guys, make sure you, if you are watching this episode, you've not subscribed. Okay. I, but, <laughs> hey, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> mm. Cheers to a life full of service for a legacy where we'll be remembered for the things that we've done and not for our name. Mm -hmm. And for me, honestly, I'm really wishing you all the best. Thank you. you are very intentional. You're very aware. You're very deliberate. I can't say the same for most people because wow. fear does something to you. That's the fear true. of how will my kids survive? What will I do after yeah. this? Where will I go? Will and you, or, or what yeah. will society think about me? Fear cripples you. Yeah. So I hope that whoever is watching and they are scared not even about motherhood or whatever any area of their life they can look back at you and see you are still here still mm -hmm. rising and Amen. still thriving yes. yeah, I want the best for you still rising and still thriving wow still I need rising. to put that somewhere I need to <laughs> no, guide my people and Lynn said it huh? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you are still rising and you are still driving shall we wind up Thank you so much Thank guys you. I really want to know what your take home was from today's conversation Ah, me have learned a lot, but I was expecting that. I just looked at Tatiana and I was like, she's showing up. She's being authentic. You can't even go now on social media and say anything about her. She's saying it all for herself and by herself. And she's very intentional. And I hope you can also check out her fitness journey because, guy, me, this woman, you just look at her. Me, I'm not even a mom yet. So <laughs> I think she's growing backwards. I think she's just like growing backwards, you know. But there's also a lot of great things that come with being aware. So, guys, let me know what your take home is on the comment section and check her out. Out, you know all her social media handles will be pinned on the comment section and they're on your screen right now and also let me know god we are done with the rebuilding I feel like i want to step outside now and do outside shows hey guys i've sat on this couch for a while now i want to step out kidogo so it's our Andalia season three of rebuilding. It should be back soon. I can't tell you why, but I hope it comes back soon. But allow me to step out and just do a bit of Inspire Global and who knows, maybe a bit of Tales of Wanjiku. But let me know who you want to see on rebuilding and I can start making that happen. But then to air maybe December or January. I don't know, guys, but I'll let you know on our community platform. Thank you so much for watching to our partners at Kings Developers Limited. You know what it is. That's Asilazimasanu properties or details get yourself an apartment at vintage guys make sure that you can even walk in there and talk to them about payment methods very flexible so i'm see your gope and of course to my incredible team for putting this work together and making sure you guys you get to watch it right on time see you tomorrow at 10 Bye -bye.